Paul, uh, a good three points today. Yeah, very convincing at the end of the day. We knew Peter Head would come here and make it very difficult, get men behind the behind the ball, which they did. And certainly their, their game plan worked, uh, worked in the first half. We just had to be very patient. Um, potentially, I thought when we had a wee handball and a penalty in the first half, which we didn't get, but uh, as the manager said to the players at half-time, just keep patient, keep doing what we're doing, and we're sure, you know, when a wee bit tiredness kicked in with Peter Head, we were fairly confident we would get some goals. To what extent did the team pick itself today? Well, the team's been on a fantastic run, so very, very difficult to leave players out. Um, but saying that, the, the bench have played a, a massive part in the last seven or eight weeks, and uh, they played a huge part today again. You know, with nine players on the on the bench today for the first time for a long time, uh, and a really, really strong bench and competition for places, which means the guys that have got the jerseys have got to perform week in and week out now. Yeah, of course, finally we saw Ryan Williamson back on the bench today. Am I right in thinking, of course, Brad Mackay as well, so is Paul Watson the only one in the squad now who's not available? Yeah, Ola's, you know, Ola did a wee bit of training uh, Thursday, Friday this week, so Ola's not far away as well. Paul Watson's, uh, you know, we've just got to be careful with Paul. It's uh, been out for eight or nine months, so we're very, very careful with Paul. So, um, great to see Ola back. So, as, as I said earlier, there, you know, a really, really strong bench and competition for places. I thought, with all due respect to Peter Head, I thought the first 45 minutes we, we controlled completely. It was one of those days we just couldn't seem to, to break the uh, door down in that first half. Um, from a management perspective, what's your, what's your thoughts at half-time when your team's been so dominant in the first 45? Yeah, as I said right at the start, we knew that was going to be their game plan, get, get 10, 10, 11 bodies behind the ball there. You know, playing from the 18-yard box, probably 35 yards out, so it's, they were really compact, really difficult for us to find spaces. We got in behind them a couple of times, but possibly not enough in the first half but uh, as I touched on earlier on you know we, we just told the players to keep doing what they're doing we knew you know they would possibly run out of legs get a wee bit tired concentration would possibly drop with them which it did and uh, run out well were they winners. Max Kuchiriavi had a great impact when he came on at half time uh, was that just purely a tactical change to go with a more natural centre midfielder or was it an injury related change? No, Liam wasn't feeling too too good uh, in the first half, so we just decided to make that change and, and put Max on. And a, a fantastic to see him get his first goal. And you know, I think he showed real. The stadium is now out of event mode. He showed real composure um, during the game, and you know, delighted for him to get his, his first goal for us. And from that point, really, with all due respect to Peter Head, I thought when we got that first goal, is it fair to say we never really looked back? Uh, that, we knew that, you know, right from the start of the game. That once we got the first goal, they would have to open up a wee bit, which they, you know, they, they didn't open up too much. But as, as I said, I think they run out of legs a wee bit, and our, our quality certainly shone through. And the bench coming on, you know, the bench is so strong, and we, we, you know, we mixed up there with, with Craig coming on, and uh, delighted for him to get his, his three goals. And that's the thing. Surely, when you're bringing a sub on, with all due respect to Craig, you know, pretty late in the game. You're not expecting him to, to bag a hat trick. Never mind one of the most sensational goals I've seen at the stadium. Yeah, uh, two two great goals, but uh, you know his his first goal will take a lot of beating for for anyone. You know that could be goal of the season. Uh, an absolute great touch and a, just a wonderful strike and a great finish. Absolutely delighted for him. It's it's been a wee bit you know difficult. He's not had a lot of game time uh, lately, so he keeps his head down. He works hard, really hard in training, and he showed he certainly showed his quality when he came on today. That's, that's a great point you make there because you've got guys like Ramar and Burrell and Craig McGuffey who were in the first half of the season starting a lot of games are now really having to, to fight for, for places. How is a, as a kind of manager, do you go about keeping everyone happy when, as you said earlier on, your team's on such a good run? Yeah, you've got to try and keep keep all the players happy. And to be fair, it's a fantastic squad we've got in the, in the change room. The morale in that change room's second to none. Uh, and as I say, that, that shows when Craig comes on and, and gets his three goals. Over 4,000 fans, almost 4,500 here at the stadium today. Terrific again, especially in the second 45. Yeah, very much so. The, the fans were patient as well. You know, the, I think the fans realised that Peter Head were in to, to sit in uh, and they kept encouraging the players. And you know, I think in the 52nd minute, they played a fantastic, fantastic tribute to, to Gary. So, uh, as I say, we wish his family all, all the best. And just finally, it's, Paul, it sets us up nicely for a, a trip across the fourth on uh, on Tuesday, the anniversary of Super Tuesday, as it turns out. Uh, let's not get carried away. <laughs> Dunfermline are uh, on merit. They're five points clear at the moment. They're on a fantastic run as well. Just how difficult is that game going to be? And what's going to be the key of Falkirk to, to take something from it? I think it's going to be a you know a fantastic occasion. There'll be a huge support. We'll, we'll take well over 2,000 fans there. 
Um, as I say, well, the, both sets of players will look forward to the game. And, uh, you know, Dunfermline obviously beat us here 1 0 the last time. So it'll be interesting to see how, how they set up. But uh, we'll certainly be on the front foot and hopefully go and get the three points. Well, here's hoping. Congratulations on a fantastic win today. And as always, thanks for your time. Thank you. Magic. Okay. Thank you.